In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between tyroglossal ductus and a branchial cleft cyst. During embryonic development, the thyroid tissue develops at a place that corresponds to the foramen secum of the tongue. So if we look at the sagittal plane, it would be initially in here that the uh, primitive thyroid is formed, and then it makes its way all the way down to the neck. Now the track that it makes uh, while it's making its way down to the neck is referred to as tyroglossal duct tract and normally this tract gets obliterated. What may remain of it is something called pyramidal lobe. So if you have a thyroid tissue and originally the uh, um, tyroglossal duct was attached to it like this, it will get obliterated and what may remain of it would be a pyramidal lobe uh, extending from the uh, thyroid tissue. Now, in some individuals, this tract may not get obliterated, and if it stays, it can form a cyst, which is referred to as a tyroglossal duct cyst. So if this is the face of that individual and this is the neck, it would be right at the center of the neck, in the midline of the neck. And since it's connected by this tract to the tongue, upon swallowing, or upon movement of the tongue, this mass will also move. Now there is about 50% chance of infection and about 1-2% to chance of prog progression into cancer. Therefore, these cysts have to be surgically removed. And the other condition I would like to talk about is a branchial cleft cyst. So during embryonic development, branchial cleft 1, 2, 3, and 4 exist. Branchial cleft 1 gives rise to the external auditory meatus. And then the second, third, and fourth one gives rise to the cervical sinus, which would normally get obliterated. Now what happens if that if these cysts do not get obliterated, then it would manifest as a lateral neck mass. So if this is that individual and the cyst persists, it would be a lateral neck mass that is usually in front of the sternocleidomastoid. Now it could be on the left side or on the, left, on the right side. Usually it only appears on one side. Um, similar to the tyroglossal duct cysts, these cysts are at increased risk of infection. So therefore they have to be surgically removed to prevent infection. In addition, they may also interfere with swallowing and breathing, which provides another reason for them to be removed. So just to summarize what I just explained, is that we have a branchial cleft cyst, which is due to the persistence of the cervical sinus, and it is a lateral cyst, so it's important, it's a lateral cyst, versus a tyroglossal duct cyst, which is in the midline of the neck, and it moves with swallowing or movement of the tongue.